All right, there we go. The 3D effects Voodoo 2 installed on my Ryzen 9 computer. Let's go, let's do it. Let's just do it. A while back, I was browsing the internet and I saw this adapter that allows you to connect PCI devices to PCI Express slots. That got me wondering, could I connect old PCI cards to a modern computer using this thing? Better yet, could I use a 3DFX Voodoo 2 on a modern computer? Well, to find that out, I ordered one. With the adapter in hand, I needed a modern computer, and the most modern one I have is my actual day-to-day -day computer, which is a Ryzen 9 3900X with 32 gigabytes of RAM. I know this is not the latest processor you can get, but it's only two years old and it's still pretty high end. So if I can get any old PCI card to work on it, especially the Voodoo 2, it will be pretty awesome. So let's do some surgery to extract some of the parts from the computer. I have to do that because I have an ITX motherboard, which means that I only have one PCI Express slot. That's a problem because the Voodoo 2 can't be used as a video card for Windows, so I will need a PCI Express slot for a discrete video card since this computer doesn't have integrated graphics. To solve that problem, I bought these two things. A cheap AM4 motherboard with more than two PCI Express slots, and the power supply because I can't be bothered removing the one from my computer because that means I'm doing the very little cable management that I've done to it. Yep, you guessed it. This was a pretty expensive video to make. Since I don't want to use my actual graphics card, I'll use this Radium HD7770, which was my main graphics card for many years. Here's the adapter. So let's quickly set up the computer and install Windows before we start trying the PCI cards on it. Now ignore that SSD on the table because I had to swap it with a normal spinning hard drive because that's the same SSD I tried to use on my original Xbox and I never unlocked it after I tried to use it, which means that I can't use it on this computer. And there we go, Windows is installed with some drivers and software I'll need, like CPU-Z. And as you can see here, it is the Ryzen 9 3900X with 32GB of RAM and the Radeon HD 7770. I wonder if anyone has ever built a Ryzen 9 with a Radeon HD 7770. Alright, so let's install the PCI Express to PCI adapter. And because I want to make sure I won't fry my Voodoo 2 when I plug it in, I'll first try the adapter with a few other PCI cards. Like this one, a trusty Realtek RTL 8139 Ethernet card. It would be sad if I killed it, but I have quite a few of them, so it's not that big of a deal. Alright, let's go. Let's check if the card shows up. Well, there is something new here in the device manager. Let's check our Ethernet adapters. Oh, that's awesome, it's showing up. Let's see if we can connect it to the network. Whoops. Well, my bad, I probably shouldn't move the card while the computer is on. Well, let's restart the computer and see if it works. At the very least, the ethernet card knows there's a cable connected to it. Let's check it again. Ah, there we go, it's connected! Let's do a little speed test. It works perfectly, it's almost the full speed of my internet connection, that's awesome! So at this point I was pretty excited and I wanted to try a few other things. Choosing what to do next was pretty easy though. A Sound Blaster Live. We just need to replace the Ethernet card with it and boot the computer. But this time things didn't go as smoothly as before. Well, that's a bit disappointing. It's not showing up. Maybe this card is not working. Luckily, I have a few more of those, so I can try another one. And it was the same story with the other ones. I couldn't get any of them working. And it happened again. 
and again. The Hail Mary here was this basic sound blaster, and it gave me a blue screen of death. This whole thing discouraged me a little bit, but the Ethernet card did work, so I thought I should try some other stuff, because maybe it's just the case that my computer doesn't like sound blasters. The bastard. So I decided to see if I could boot the computer with a PCI video card. After the sound blasters though, I wasn't super confident, because graphics cards are more fundamental pieces of hardware. So to give it the best chance, I got the most modern PCI graphics card I have. A super ultra mega powerful... NVIDIA GeForce GT 610. Actually, I bought this video card for another project. I wanted to see if it would work on a Socket 7 motherboard, but the earliest motherboards I had that could power it were Pentium 3 ones. All right, let's see if this thing will boot. Ugh, nothing. Damn, this is annoying. Well, since we're already here, let's try this ATI 3D Rage. And nothing again. At this point, I was wondering if the Ethernet card was a fluke and connecting any other PCI cards to that computer would actually work. So I threw one last Hail Mary. Let's try this old SS3 Trio 64. This is my last try because I don't think anything else will work. Wait, what? That works? Look at that, it's booting! Ah, uh, interesting. This video card doesn't seem to have the video capabilities to run the usual Windows splash screen, so it falls back to the Windows Vista one. I didn't even know Windows 10 still had this. We're in. In black and white, weirdly, but we're in. That's probably happening because of some incompatibility with the Windows 10 default VGA driver. Well, it doesn't matter. It works. Let's have a look at the display adapter properties. Ah, there we go. It knows it's an S3 chipset. Man, it's really hard to wrap my head around how insane this is. This computer is a Ryzen 9 3900X from 2019 with an S3 Trio 64 from circa 1999. This means I'm running a video card that is around 24 years older than the rest of the system. How crazy is that? That made me hopeful again. Let's see if there are some other old ass video cards that we could use on this computer. So next up, let's try this Matrox Mystique. This one is technically a 3D accelerator, which is theoretically good for Windows 10, but it is pretty old, so I won't hold my breath with this one. That assuming it will live in post. Ah, it works! With a Windows 10 splash screen and everything. And we have color! Let's check the adapter properties in. Yep, it knows it's a Matrox chipset. Let's go on CPU-Z again. Ryzen 9 3900X and... Matrox MGA 1064SG. <laughs> it's crazy how Windows is running with animations and everything. Let's try to run Solitaire because it's a game and it has a few animations. <laughs> yeah, it runs with all the animations. <laughs> It's crazy how much better the default VGA driver on Windows is compared to what it used to be. On Windows Vista and 7, all of the animations and effects would be completely disabled if you were on those drivers. Alright, I had a couple more video cards I wanted to try before the Voodoo 2, like my trusty Trident TGY 9440. This is not the best video card, but I love it because I used to use it on a lot of my old computers. By the way, was there a difference in popularity between certain video cards depending on the country back in the 90s? Back in Brazil, I would come across Tridents all the time, and S3s were very occasional. But in Australia, it feels like it's a lot easier to come by S3 cards than Tridents from this time period. Is it just me, or is that an actual thing that happened back then? Like, is there another country where maybe Sir's Logic was a more popular brand? Leave a comment below if you have any idea. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps me out. Anyway, let's see if the computer will boot with a trident. And it's not working. I mean, the computer seems to be booting, but the graphics are completely corrupted. Well, not all of them can be winners, right? But to be fair, this is actually the first time I'm testing this particular card, so I don't know if it's some incompatibility or if it's the card itself. I do hope it's just some sort of incompatibility. I need to test it on a more period-correct computer to be sure. 
Anyway, at last but not least, or maybe least, I don't know, the Tsang Labs ET4000, specifically the W32P model which came out in 1994. This is the last revision of the ET4000 chipset, which the first one, the ET4000AX, came out in 1989 like one year after I was born. <laughs> that probably makes this the most outdated video card I tried on this computer, so I wasn't very hopeful this was gonna work. Well, if you are in hell, you might as well hug the devil, so let's try it anyway and see what happens. Well, <laughs> look at this, the computer posts. Can you believe that? The video card and the rest of the hardware are 27 years apart. Oh, of course it's black and white. That's obviously because of the drivers. Let's check CPU-Z. Here it is, Ryzen 9 3900X and uh, that's anticlimactic. Wait one second. Here we go, Sang Lab ZT4000. This is so dumb. Let's try some solitaire. It's mind blowing that the Windows animations are working, even if they are not full speed and everything is black and white. And the game is working fine. This is so crazy, 27 years. Do you reckon we can play a YouTube video? Let's find out. Well, it's not perfect, but it does work. Keep in mind that all of the video and the animations are probably being processed by the CPU. It's still incredible it's working though. Now, even after all of those tests, I wasn't confident that Voodoo 2 was gonna work. But at least I was pretty confident it wasn't gonna explode. And that's all that matters because these things are super expensive these days. So finally, it was time to try our Voodoo 2. All right, here we go. The 3D effects Voodoo 2 installed on my Ryzen 9 3900X. Yep, I reused that joke. Sue me, I'll never get tired of it. Anyway, the computer booted normally, meaning the VGA pass-through is working as expected, but that's not a big surprise. Let's see if anything shows up in the device manager. Here we go, there's a multimedia video controller that wasn't here before. So Windows did pick up that the Voodoo is connected to the computer. This is very promising. I just need some, well, 64-bit Voodoo 2 drivers. Luckily, after doing some research, I found an article from some guy who managed to use a Voodoo 2 on Windows 10 64. This is great because someone did make 64-bit drivers for the Voodoo 2, which gave me hope this was gonna work. So I downloaded those drivers and got ready to install them. The annoying thing though is that these drivers aren't digitally signed, so every time I start Windows I have to go and disable the driver signature enforcement. I tried to do it permanently, but none of the methods I found on the internet worked. Regardless, after that we can try to install the drivers. And there it is, the Voodoo 2. I obviously wanted to try this with compatible games, but I also wanted to try some 3DFX tech demos made for the Voodoo 2. So I downloaded a few so I could try them. Let's go, the first one I'm gonna try is this 3DFX Borg, whatever that means. Um, map mem returned an error trying to map memory. I first thought this error was because this demo was super old and maybe it didn't work with Windows 10 64. I tried to set compatibility mode, but that didn't do anything. I also tried other demos, but those errored out as well for other reasons. So I decided to go straight into a game that the guy in the article got working, a real tournament. All right, let's try a real tournament because I know this game can run on Windows 10 64. Let's choose 3D effects glide here. And, ah oh crap, same error again. Yeah, it wouldn't work no matter what I tried. I found a forum post from some guy who managed to use the Voodoo 2 on Windows Vista. And he had some tweaks to be done in the Windows registry, but that didn't work either. After a while trying, I actually thought it worked for a moment after a reboot. Oh, it's working. Wait. Oh, oh, it's windowed.
Yeah, that mentor was running on software mode because if it was using the Voodoo, the game would have been in full screen. All of the other games I tried had the same issue. At that point, I was hugely disappointed, so I tried to change gears a little bit. Like I mentioned earlier, some people got it working on Windows Vista, so I decided to try that. Eventually, first I installed Windows 7 to see if that was gonna work. And here we have Windows 7 on the Ryzen 9 3900X. Now that was another can of worms in itself. It seems that manufacturers don't make AM4 chipset drivers for Windows 7 and earlier anymore. But don't worry, there's always some dodgy custom unsigned driver that you can download from some random forum. Which means I could at least get my USB ports working so I could copy games, the Voodoo 2 drivers and some other stuff to the computer. After all of that, I could finally install all of the software that I needed and... Map mem return an error trying to map memory. Same error. This is so annoying. Now, because I'm a huge proponent of the sunken cost fallacy, I was willing to try a few more things. I bet no one has ever seen Windows Vista running on a Ryzen 9 3900X. It was the same situation here. After installing the dodgy drivers for the USB and the Voodoo 2 driver, I got the same map mem error. Even after I made the registry changes that the forum post suggested. My last hope here was to try Windows XP with 32-bit drivers, maybe even the official ones, but I was getting blue screens of death before I could even install the operating system. At this point, there was nothing I could realistically do anymore. The hardware is compatible, but this is a software problem that I just can't solve, which is a bit disappointing. But hey, since we're already here, I want to try one last thing. I have this PCI RAID controller, which I got a while back for another experiment that failed. I wanted to run two SD to IDE adapters in RAID 0 to see if there was going to be a significant performance boost compared to using only one adapter. But I couldn't do that because the motherboards I tried didn't like this controller. But maybe it will work here, so let's try to install Windows 10 on this 40 gigabyte IDE Maxter hard drive. All right, here we go. The card is working. I can't see the hard drive in the firmware. Let me set it up for single drive use. Now we can reboot the computer and see if the BIOS will detect it. Let's go to the boot options and here we go. The Mac store drive is here. That's awesome. Let's see if we can install Windows 10 on this thing. All right, we need to load up the drivers for the controller during the install. Luckily, this card came with a CD with 64-bit drivers. And here we go, the hard drive is available here. Let's finish the install. And here it is. Let's check the disk management utility. Here's our 40 gigabyte drive. This is so dumb, I love it. Of course, the next thing we'll do is benchmark this thing using Crystal Disk Mark. All right, here are the results, and this is the reason the computer is sluggish as hell. 30.6 megabytes per second of sequential read and 32.04 megabytes per second of sequential write. Wow, the random writes and reads are under one megabyte per second. To put that in perspective, these are the speeds of the same computer with my actual NVMe SSD without me bothering to close any of the things I was running at the time. It's crazy how fast SSDs are these days. Anyway, that's cool and all, but I think we can do better than that. What if we boot this computer with a Quantum Bigfoot drive? That's right, this is a hard drive from 1996, making it 23 years older than the computer. Now let's turn the computer on and see if we can find it in the BIOS. Here we go, Quantum Bigfoot CY 4.3 gigabytes. Now the issue here is obvious, Windows 10 won't fit on this hard drive. So I decided to go with Lubuntu here because it's a modern Linux distro that doesn't take much more than one gigabyte of space on the hard drive. And there we go, the Ryzen 9 3900X booted from the Bigfoot. This is so cool. We obviously don't have Crystal Disk Mark here, but we can still benchmark the drive with this tool called GNOME Disk. Mm -hmm. 
For some reason I can't test the write speed, but we can have an idea of the hard drive speed based on the average read rate, which is around 5.6 megabytes per second. This is incredibly slow. Here are the NVMe SSD speeds for comparison again. The difference is insane. And there you have it! This was a fun video to make, even if it was a bit disappointing that we couldn't actually game on the Voodoo 2, especially considering that there have been people who managed to use it on Windows 10 and even Windows 11. But it's awesome that we managed to use this computer with so many old cards, especially those old video cards. It's crazy that you can still connect those pieces of hardware together. It's all a matter of software to get them fully working, really. Someone with enough time and skill could definitely do that. Would it be worth it? Probably not but it's definitely possible and that's a crazy prospect. But that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to press the like button. And if you enjoy content around retro computing, retro gaming, old internet and other random tech stuff, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future parts of the Eric experiment. Thanks for watching.